So I'm Simon Singh and I guess I started off as a science, well, somebody who celebrated science. So I made TV shows about science, I've written books about science, I've got up on stage and given lectures about science. And what I'm trying to do all the time is just to try and get other people as interested in science as I am. And I suppose my interest is, is moved away from celebrating science and towards um, criticizing bad science. Um, I do anything that really kind of gets other people um, as interested in science as I, as I am. And I suppose originally I was, I was focused on celebrating science. So I've written books about mathematics and how great mathematics is, how great cosmology is, um, how great technology is. Um, but about five to ten years ago I moved towards not just celebrating good science but criticizing bad science, criticizing pseudoscience, criticizing anti-science and I suppose um, that's where my connection with the skeptical movement grew. Um, in particular I wrote a book about alternative medicine with Professor Edzard Ernst and Edzard um, is the world's first professor of complementary medicine and so working with him on a book was, was, was my gateway into, into critical thinking and skepticism and trying to perhaps protect the public from bad science and bad medicine I suppose. Uh, I am, um, you know, I just focus on things that interest me or things that annoy me or things that frustrate me and I think everybody has their own approach to skepticism partly because of what they're interested in. Um, some people are interested in debunking psychics or, or challenging alternative therapists or, or um, taking on the global warming weirdos, you know, they, they, I don't want to call them climate skeptics but that's what they tend to call themselves. Um, so some people define themselves by their topics, um, some people uh, will have a take on skepticism that depends on their own particular talent. So um, I'm probably not very good at engaging with people on a one-to-one -one basis but I tend to engage better by writing or by um, you know, getting up and giving lectures or, 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 or making radio shows and so on. Um, other people will have a, a take on skepticism that relies on their incredible uh, ability to look at um, regulations. You know, I, I think, and, and, you know, looking at regulations and using those regulations to challenge bad science is a very effective tool. It's not, not really for me, but I know other people who do it and do it very, very well. Um, so I think all of these different approaches to, to challenging bad science are valid. So I, for example, wrote an article about chiropractic, which in an indirect way had an impact on the chiropractic profession. Um, but other people said, well, what we're going to do is complain about chiropractic. We're going to write to the regulatory bodies and ask them to look at some of the unfounded claims made by chiropractors. Uh, and they had, I think, an even bigger impact than I had. Um, so, yeah, different approaches, different, different ways of tackling the same problem. Well, I think like homeopaths use, use, use homeopathic pills which have no evidence base and, and kinesiologists diagnose using techniques which have no evidence base. Um, chiropractors, most people think of chiropractors as treating back problems and there's some marginal evidence that chiropractors might have some benefit, not very much, but to be honest lots of people struggle with dealing with back problems. So physiotherapists and, and so on, you know, everybody's as good or as bad as everybody else. Um, the problem with chiropractors um, are twofold. One is that um, there's a risk, I think there's an added risk if you see a chiropractor compared to seeing maybe uh, a conventional doctor. Some of their manipulations are quite aggressive and, and, and can be quite damaging. Um, but also they make claims to treat things which are nothing to do with the back and for which they have no evidence whatsoever. So, for example, um, I came across literature whereby chiropractors were claiming to treat children for colic, ear infections, asthma. I, I have no understanding and no appreciation as to why chiropractors would think they could deal with these, these, these uh, conditions in children. So my article um, for the Guardian newspaper in the UK focused on these claims made by chiropractors. And, um, they obviously weren't very chuffed by my article, but instead of debating with me, instead of taking a right to reply, uh, instead of putting out their own side of the story, they decided to sue me for libel, um, which, which was a horrendous experience. My libel case went on for a couple of years. Um, I, 
you know, I, I've, I've been working as a journalist and a, and a writer for, for you know, 20 or more years and, and I've had some successful books so I have a, a bank balance that enables me to fight a legal case if necessary and I have a reputation which I want to defend so I wasn't going to let anybody call me a shoddy journalist or a defamatory journalist. Um, so I stood up for myself and I had a massive amount of support from the, the sceptical community, um, not just in the UK but from America. I remember James Randi sent me an email and said, you know, we've got your back. Um, the Norwegians, the Swedes, the Germans, uh, here in Australia, uh, bloggers and Twitters, Twitter, tweeters in Canada. Um, you know, I saw the emails, I read the blogs, I heard the podcasts. That support for me was personally very important and kept me going for the two years until eventually, um, from having been on the ropes for a long period of time, um, we went to the Court of Appeal and a very, very powerful Court of Appeal, uh, the Lord Chief Justice, the Master of the Rolls, Sir Stephen Sedley, um, changed the case around and made it clear that what I'd written was probably fair comment, was probably reasonable journalism and was defensible, at which point the chiropractors backed down. Um, so I, I won my case, that's a big tick. Um, the chiropractors, I think, were exposed for some of the bad claims they were making. So there was a lot of publicity that the chiropractors got because they sued me. Um, much, much more bad publicity than, than my original article would ever have generated. So a big tick. Um, and the third big tick was that my case, along with many others, um, made people realise there is something wrong with English libel law. If, um, if, if, if it stops or discourages journalists from writers about writing about matters of public interest. I was writing about a medical treatment for children, um, making very reasonable claims in my article, uh, very reasonable criticisms in my article, and yet the libel laws almost gagged me. And so uh, Ben Goldacre, another skeptic, uh, he was being sued for libel. Peter Wilmshurst, a cardiologist, was being sued for libel. Uh, Francisco Lacerda, a linguist, a scientist, professor from Sweden was being threatened with libel. All sorts of people, the academic journal Nature was being threatened with libel, was sued for libel in a huge case. Um, so all of these people, a lot of them from the scientific community, made the British public aware that we needed to change our libel laws. And um, it was a grassroots movement, you know, lots of bloggers, lots of skeptics involved, lots of human rights groups, lots of charities, lots of consumer rights groups, lots of parenting groups, um, all worked together. Um, and now we're in 2014 uh, and we've just got a new defamation bill um, and we have a much fairer libel law in England, I'm glad to say. So, um, so yeah, it's a, it's a good news story all round.